Kleinman's The Illness Narratives. So Arthur Kleinman, very influential in medical anthropology, he's a practicing psychiatrist and anthropologist at Harvard Medical School, wrote a really important, very interesting book called The Illness Narratives, Suffering, Healing, and the Human Condition. And so for Kleinman, right, this medical history that doctors take, let's say that first encounter between the patient and the doctor, and the doctor takes the medical history, is kind of the foundation of clinical medical uh, practice. The doctor takes the history of the present illness and takes what he calls an illness narrative because it's being reported by the subject, the, the perceiver, the experience of the disease. But for Kleinman, he would argue that medical history and what's happening at this fundamental level, this listening to the patient narrate their experience, their discomfort, their suffering, is very clumsy and poorly implemented in biomedicine. So for a client, the medical history, if you will, is a great opportunity for progress in healthcare because The medical history is precisely the stories that people tell about their illnesses that can help us better understand the treatment and healing that they need. And Kleiman's work has been part of the emergence of a field known as narrative medicine today. So we're back to that culture biology, right? This kind of interconnection, uh, the beliefs, the values, the practices of a patient and those around them in terms of how they perceive and how they respond to disease. So in this sense, curing an illness, treating an illness, giving health care is about understanding meaning production. It's about the way, right, this person the patient sees their discomfort and suffering in terms of meaning, what it means to them, and how the doctor is going to interpret it. So in this sense, right, it's another intersection, if you will, of disease in terms of kind of the biology of it. And on the other hand, the shared and learned way of life that allows us to make sense of our biology, a sense of our embodied experience. So narrative, I mean, Kleiman is bringing in really a linguistic concept. Uh, Some people uh, think of language as a part of culture. He argues that a narrative is a really basic way for a patient to present an experience of disease to a doctor. He's making an argument that they also they need to be like literary critics in a way. They need to un- better understand how the patient's gonna assign meaning, the kind of sequent events that happen, plot-like, in leading them up to the present and to leading them up to seek care, seek treatment, how they kind of integrate all of the different uh, component parts, maybe symptoms and things, right? Uh, Events that happen, right, as the illness is playing out, how that is integrated into an evaluative narrative whole. Kleinman argues is important for uh, a, a medical doctor. If they're taking that medical history, they need to go beyond the surface of the patient's narrative and really see how it's put together, the parts that made it up that are shared and learned coming from community and culture. This will help the doctor understand how the patient is responding to disease and will point, right, the doctor uh, in a very patient-centered approach to the kind of care and treatment that they need, they themselves need. So examples of this that Kleiman talks about are plentiful. Uh, One of the categories that he uses is chronic pain and stress. And so he uses some examples of, in medical history, the way that attending to the narrative can help us understand the illness. So you have back pain, a male patient, who suffers an injury at work has really gone from being a um, strong leader at work to becoming vulnerable and fearful and pessimistic, withdrawing and becoming isolated. Another generalized stress and anxiety, you have a woman who suffered great you know, personal and social trauma in her life, is going through employment security as well as dealing with 
some of the more general right, um, symptoms of stress and anxiety. Kind of final example is a man who is suffering from intestinal issues and through medical history and the narrative kind of gets this picture, right, of somebody who's law struggling, particular patient is unemployed and helps to understand why they're responding poorly to the diet, previous diagnosis and treatment regime of dietary changes and pain reducers that have been ineffective. The outgrowth of Kleinman's work is phenomenal. Uh, the work of Rita Sharon, what Sharon's trying to do is precisely what Kleinman started, trying to develop narrative competence, develop a better, you know, stronger medical community, more communicative, better listeners, more empathetic to, to patients, patient-centered care in a lot of ways. You know, trying to improve care from uh, a simple techno-scientific practice pain relievers as a way of solving this. Um, just thinking about it in biological terms, degenerative disc disease, scoliosis, and so on. Coming at this in a much more holistic lens that really looks at life, right, and the life ways of the human beings who are living and suffering. So in conclusion, all really within the notion of a culture of illness, talking about this really um, influential, informative text, the illness narratives and a patient-centered approach really to understanding disease experience with the goal of bringing something like narrative analysis, understanding how people narrate their illness as essential to helping to strengthen the medical community, improve doctor-patient relationships, and the level of patient care.